Okay, welcome back to another live broadcast. I'm Hank Strange. This is the Who Moves My Freedom podcast live from the Big Daddy Gun studio. Shout out to the Big Daddy Guns folks for having us here in the studio and everyone else that supports the Hank Strange situation. Safety Harbor Firearms, Andrews Custom, Rand CLP. Shout out to, to those guys. And, you know, I'm, I'm always forgetting to shout out people. So today, we're going to talk Father's Day because Father's Day is coming up this weekend. And I have special guests here, Joe from 13C Gun Reviews. What's up, Joe? Hey. How's hey, Hank. Going? How are you? Good, man. Good. And I also good. have Steve from 904 Outdoors. What's going on, Steve? How are you? Doing, doing good. All right. So now, and, and we, we may get some other people jumping in with us. We'll see. But basically what we're going to talk about is Father's Day, whatever else is on our minds. This is all part of my Herculean effort to broadcast live every single day. You will see me go totally gray. <laughs> they gray mohawk. Go. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you know, either that or I'm going to get skinny. <laughs> So, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing. So, um, you know, what are you guys doing for Father's Day? Let's start with uh, with you, Steve. What are you doing for Father's Day? What do you do you celebrate Father's Day? Do a whole bunch of stuff? What's going not, on? Not really. I'm sure my kids will make me something, but I'll, I'm probably working. I work like every day. So, uh, yeah, I, I'll get home that night. I'm sure they'll have something set up for me and Okay. About it. <laughs> yeah, cool. So yeah, so today's your day off. You have like yeah. rotating days off, right? So yeah, it's it's horrible. <laughs> yeah. So you don't really get to um to plan it out like that. So what what about you, Joe? What are you doing for Father's Day? You got big plans? Um, I have I honestly I don't know what I'm doing on Sunday. Um I'm sure we'll do something around the house. Normally it's weekend, it's gonna be nice, so I should probably I'll wind up grilling something. Um other than that, uh, I got some uh Got a cool event tomorrow that uh, the families let me escape to. I'm gonna drive up to Michigan and see uh, see our mutual friend uh, Mark Krebs with Krebs Custom and uh, my oh, buddy cool. uh, going up there. Okay, uh, who was the other person? I missed that. Uh, Mark Krebs, Krebs Custom. Right. Yeah, Mark. And then was and who else did you say? Uh, Everyday civilian, Matt. Oh okay. oh. okay. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, he's a pretty good firearms photographer. Oh, cool. Yeah, awesome. Say what's up to uh, Krebs for me. We've got the KV-13 Mod 2 right now that we've been doing stuff with, so, you know. Nice, how are you liking it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you say how am I liking it? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. It's, it's a, a nice gun, you know. Probably one of the nicest AKs I've ever, you know, messed around with for a while. It's pretty good. I mean, the only, the only things about it is that, you know, it's obviously got some weight on it. Um... You know, that's really it. And to obviously it's something that we're TNEing. I mean, it's a, you know, it's, it's some good money for it, but I think it's worth the money. And, um, and you know, I, I don't know how it is. I know usually Krebs sells out those guns. I'm not sure. I think they, they probably have a few of them out there for people that are looking for them. It's a, if you're an AK guy and you want to have nice AKs in your collection, that's definitely one that you, that you should have, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Krebs oh, yeah. is like right right up at the top of the list. So have you sh have you shot it, Joe? Uh, I don't know if I've shot the KBS-13. I've shot a number of Krebs guns. Hmm. Um, and uh, I've got, I've got a, I don't actually have a complete Krebs rifle, but I have a couple of uh, couple AKs with some different uh, parts from Krebs on some different uh, forends and internals yeah. and whatnot that, uh, yeah. that I really like. Okay, cool. What about you, Steve? You ever mess around with any Krebs? Never touched any Krebs. We've done Pretty much anything from Century Arms, uh, which mm -hmm. shot a couple of Wassers and stuff, but never, uh, never mm -hmm. Krebs. But I, okay. I need to, I need to add that to our, our repertoire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you if you have the opportunity, definitely. definitely take that opportunity up. Okay, yeah. So you know, we're talking Father's Day right here. You know, honestly, like I'm kind of like bah humbug about <laughs> Father's Day. You know, um, I'm actually sick of all the days. That's one thing. I'm I'm happy to be a father. You know, we're all fathers here. I'm happy to be a father. Pretty pr proud of my kids. I've got one kid that just, you know, my I've got two boys. So one just graduated high school and is on his way off to college, and um, the other one has been promoted from the 11th to the 12th grade, which is amazing in and of itself. <laughs> he was actually pretty good this year. All of a sudden, you know, with kids, especially boys. 
you know, they go along they, at a totally different pace, I want to say, than girls. And all of a sudden, he kind of like kicked in and, and was doing good this year. So this weekend, I think that we're going to we're gonna get on the road. We're going away on a little family vacation. And um, we want to spend some time hanging out with our son that's going off to college. And his birthday is coming up the day before we drop him off. He's going to do the summer session. So we're trying to hang out. But, you know, all these days, man, I'm kind of like, there's two things. I, I feel like there's an attack on fathers and manhood. And, um, you know, th this is probably going to, these are probably the last of the Father's Day. Eventually, Father's Days will just be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, with all the things that are happening, I just feel that way. And it's not, you know, it's not that I'm sure you guys will feel the same way, that your families appreciate you and everything. But there's like something weird that goes on with me with all these holidays that they keep pushing us into. And we've got to, you know, we've got to celebrate and go buy stuff. But um, there's not necessarily, I, I like to, for me, if you appreciate someone, I think you should appreciate them every day. What do you guys think about right. that? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know like with Mother's Day, um, I appreciate Lola every day. She, she probably would, <laughs> she's probably like shaking her head no. You don't appreciate me enough. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's that's the way I look at it. I try to, you know, um, it's the same thing with, with the Christmas holidays and all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, um, I, I even think that there's people who are supposed to be Christians and, you know, they're, they're only really Christians on Sunday. <laughs> and I think that if this is what you believe in, you should be that every day. And I think that's right. kind of like, I think every day you should be a father. Every day you should be a mother, be a good human being, get out there and do things. And when there's these days, it puts on like so much pressure. <laughs> you got to be yeah. extra good that day. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to be extra nice to your kid. No lectures yeah. on Father's Day. <laughs> This is not a good time to ground anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no cell phone for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So wh what do you think about that, Joe? Am I just like, am I being Ebenezer Scrooge? You know, there's, there's so many different attacks on the male gender right now. Um, you know, eventually, yeah, I'll probably be uh, replaced with some sort of indiscriminate, you know, nondescript, uh, yeah, pick your gender uh, day or something. <laughs> gender day. Parent, they're just going to be like, you know, uh, uh, adult guardian or caretaker day or something like that. Yeah. I mean, they're not even going to use the term parent, I don't think. They're just going to I, 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 – there's so many attacks on the institution of family. Um, and, and not that you can't have any sort of mixed gender family or parent structure whatsoever, but there's just a, a – a, an attack on the traditional family structure. Mm -hmm. um, there's no reason why we couldn't theoretically include other families. Uh, oh, uh oh, we lost Joe. Okay, he's probably gonna have to sign back in here. That's the beauty of the live broadcast. All right, Joe, we'll <laughs> wait for you to sign back in. So, do you want to do you want to pick up there where he left off, Steve? And add, and you have anything to add to that? I mean, I agree with him. I mean, like like he said, the the institution of oh, he's back now. Let him finish. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Joe, you're I, back. I, yeah, sorry about that. My browser just like refreshed. I don't know what happened there. That was weird. Yeah. No, that's cool. I understand. Uh, yeah. No, so, uh, you know, it, there's no reason why you can't include uh, more people into something with without excluding other people, if, if that makes sense. Right. You know, and, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know why it always seems to be some sort of either or. Why can't it just be and? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, if if that, if that makes sense, right? And um, but yeah, I, I think it's just part of the general attack on you know what's almost an attack on Western society, civilization, and society as well, in a general. And now we're getting really out there as far as a larger scope of you know uh, just you know for whatever reason everything Western is bad right now, um, and you know you see it more in Europe uh, than you do over here uh, right now. But you know it, it's slowly coming across, and they're trying the best they can to to do that here. So is, is Father's Day, is that a Western thing or the appreciation of the father? Is that a, something that's only prevalent in Western society or around the world? I'm trying to remember when I've traveled. I mean, definitely in England, uh, there were things like that. Well, you know, and actually back, back in the days is different from today. So yeah, the commercial, 
the, the commercialization of it is probably a Western thing, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, I think in, in the other places that I've been, every day is like Father's Day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but this was in the past. I, I don't know how the world is. It seems to me like the rest of the world is giving up on these things faster than we are here in America. So um, you never know. It's that rush to political correctness, I think. Yeah. Nobody wants yeah. to be, you know, they, for, it, it, it's just like I said, it, it, it's, it, everybody wants it to be either or. Right. You know, we can, we can celebrate a Father's Day and celebrate a Mother's Day, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, and that that's just one, you know, uh, you know, example of either or, you know, you, we can mm -hmm. celebrate both just because you're celebrating Father's Day doesn't mean you're discriminating against women. Yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah. And, right. Yeah. But I, I mean, so do you think it will be better to just get rid of all these things? I mean, we have like, you know, if you look at the calendar right now. Um, I don't know if it's the Hallmark conspiracy, the Illuminati, or whoever it is, but every single day is a freaking day. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, every day is at least one or two days. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I I think we should keep a handful of traditional ones. Uh, maybe throw and talk, leave talk like a pirate day. And, uh, and <laughs> yar. Yeah. Well. You know, okay. Yeah. None. None of us. Are, so is anyone here against talk like a pirate day? Because I'm not. I'm for it. No, I'm for it. Yeah. yeah okay, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I think it's a good thing. You know, it's, it's a good day to drink, to pick up some extra rum and you know, just kind of kick off. Um, you know, generally, my feeling is if a holiday is younger than I am, I won't celebrate. Okay. Makes sense. That's kind of how I look yeah. at it. So, you know, Sweetheart's Day, I'm not into it. <laughs> yeah. What about the, you know, what about the, I, the I May the 4th? What, 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 no. Right. What about May the 4th be with you and like Star Wars Day? <laughs> Star Wars Day. Yeah. You know, so I know so I know I, I have friends that are crazy about Star Wars and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I I, I make I make those uh, those little you know quips. Um, but so far, I mean, well, I guess it is commercialized because that's what it is. But um, you know, so far, I, I don't think anybody's doing greeting cards for May the Fourth or getting each other gifts. I could be wrong. They probably are. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Um, probably somewhere out there. Somebody a yeah. lightsaber. You know? Yeah, everyone who goes to Comic Con <laughs> probably is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know about something like that because it's just fun and quirky, you know. Mm -hmm. um, not that I make plans that day, but yeah, you know, if no, it happens, I, it happens. Right. I'm not knocking people, you know, like picking a day yeah. and doing things or celebrating it. I mean, I think it's just too institutionalized. And then we have all these days and then you feel like you have to do something and you have to be really extra nice. You know, um, yeah. If I really if we really got into what we would want out of Father's Day, like if it's Father's Day, <laughs> you don't want, even want to see like if there was some automatic stuff that I get on Father's Day and put it in a list, then we definitely would be banned. Here's an, here's an error 15. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. That's that's not even you know. I'm I'm not knocking that, but that's not even where I was going. That's not, that's not even where I was going with that. But so you know, um, I'm assuming that I think I asked you guys this earlier off air. You guys, everyone here, their their dad is still out there. I know mine is. Oh yeah. So I mean, how was it growing up? Do you remember Father's Day? With your dad, do you remember that? Because I actually don't. Before um, before coming to America, I don't remember that. And even when I came to America in the 80s, I don't really remember that being a thing. I don't know if my dad was even around on those days. <laughs> I, I re Personally, I remember it back as maybe not necessarily Father's Day, but I remember Mother's Day and Grandparents' Day for as far back as I can ever remember. Yep. Okay. Um, Father's Day was kind of one of those – slightly smaller things, but uh, mm -hmm. Mother's Day was always a huge deal. Grandparents' Day was always a huge deal. Uh, Father's Day was, uh, it was a deal, but it wasn't like, you know, I don't yeah, know. I didn't even know there was a Grandparents' Day. <laughs> yeah, that's totally, oh, really? this is like the first time I ever heard of Grandparents' Day. <laughs> so so, so there's something. You know, my, my grandparents died a long time ago. Maybe, the, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Yeah. Well, there's something that seems to go the other way because I don't know how big Grandparents' Day is now, but I remember being a young, a young little guy, uh, growing up, and mm -hmm. I'd hang out. I'd spend the night, like the night, you know, the night before, you know, I'd spend the day with my grandparents and spend the night at their house. And the next day, oh, wow! So this was a thing. Up. When was this? Uh, I don't know. Early eighty, late, 
very late eighties or, or very late seventies, early eighties. Um, and you know, and we would like go out the next day, we go out for breakfast somewhere. They get like free breakfast cause they brought me with them. And then later we'd go out to lunch at like Sonny's barbecue. And I think they got like half price for grandparents day since I was there with them, something like that. I mean, it was like a big deal back then. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember it, anything like, well, no, you're too, you're, you're too young, 904, probably. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I see there is, a, I think it's September 10th, Grandparents Day, but it's like, that's definitely been pushed over for something else then. I don't know what else comes it, up. It, Someone who knows out there, let us know what happens on Grandparents Day, because I don't see it, or maybe my brain just filters it out. I see we've got uh, 50, 50% 50 tacticals in here. Are you there? Hey, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Oh, there you go. There you go. Now we see you. Look at that. That's just pure handsomeness right there. Just pure rugged. This this show is just too much sexy right now. <laughs> so we're talking about we're talking about Father's Day, and um, I was just asking Joe. Joe said, "Do you do you have you ever heard of uh, Grandparents Day, Fiddy? Or yeah. Do, you have? Yeah." Oh. I think that was because of my uh, my son's uh, preschool. Oh. They uh, they let us know it was Grandparents Day because sometimes his grandma comes and picks him up. Oh, okay. So it's when so whenever grandma comes, it's Grandparents yeah. Day. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Me? Yeah. Say oh, okay. No, I, I said that you said whenever his grandmother comes to pick him up, it's Grandparents Day, or they they actually. Oh no. Oh. They 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 actually told him or th that it was like Grandparents Day, Grandparents Day one day, and then uh, he told his grandma, and then she ended up telling us. Oh. That's how I thought that there was a Grandparents Day. Okay. Cool. Cool. So there is. So, okay, Joe, you're vindicated. Uh, you know. <laughs> I uh, I mean I guess for me not being born in America and not having any grandparents to speak of you know when I used to ask my mother about all these things she you know she would go you know you just fell off of a coconut tree don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> so all right so so you know tell us Derek what what do you um you know well actually let me make sure I introduce you to everyone here on the channel this is my friend Derek. He is 50% tactical on YouTube. Hi. Right. Say what's up yep. to the folks out there. What's um, up, and, guys? Yeah, and we are talking Father's Day. And uh, do you have any? Do you have any thoughts on this? I, what I was saying is, I'm kind of like, kind of like bah humbug about Father's Day, to be honest with you. Yeah, me personally, I really don't care about holidays in general, no matter yeah. what holiday it is, uh, unless it's like for the kids. But me personally, I don't care. So, like a, uh, the other day when I went to pick up my son from preschool, one of the teachers said Happy Father's Day. It took me by surprise because I totally forgot that it was coming up. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I don't know um, if it's just one. Maybe it's because we're gun guys, or or maybe just guys are like this. You know, we don't really care so much about these days. It's too much work or responsibilities of things we have to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, and then I'm thinking like, man, on Father's Day, I actually have to be nice. You know, I have to go someplace. I just, I just want to sleep. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't have to be nice on Father's Day. You should just, that's your day. You should be able to do what you want. Right. Exactly. You know, um, someone should come. Someone should just. Someone should do all the putting on punishment for me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are, are you planning anything? You uh, obviously. Or maybe you're not planning anything here. Yeah, I'm not planning anything. Yeah. So Just now let's so let's find out the flip of that. When it was Mother's Day, what did you do? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's a guy I think too. Yeah. I got I got I got a bad a really bad memory. So. Okay, let's go down the line. Okay, so Joe, what did you do on Mother's Day? You better remember. <laughs> I, I, I do actually. So we, uh, Mother's Day basically, we hung out around the house. We slept in. Um, I don't, I know my wife didn't cook. I don't remember what I did for dinner, uh, but we had gotten back the day before. Uh, we flew in. Uh, we were uh, in the, uh, we went on a cruise and went to the Caribbean for a week. 
and we oh, got yeah, back yeah. Oh, wow. that Saturday, the day before. So kind of Mother's Day was her week, the week before that. And no, that Mother's Caribbean day. cruise was your Mother's Day gift, man. <laughs> Just sell that. Yeah. <laughs> For the next three years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. If it, if it was left up to me, I think on Mother's Day, um, I'm pretty sure I didn't cook anything. Because if Lola doesn't cook, nobody eats. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, or, you know, if she's not there, then obviously what. But if she's around, it's like, okay, it's Mother's Day. What are you making us? Yeah. <laughs> are you making us something special on Mother's Day? <laughs> no, I, I'm just lucky Mother's Day falls on uh, falls in a warmer time of year. So I'm outside. I'm on the grill. I'm either smoking something or you know, I think the Mother's Day before, I wound up uh, grilling lobster tail and some prawns and scallops. And it was it was a feast. Oh, okay, yeah, you're too good. You're too good. I, I remember what I did. I, I did a post. I put up a post on social media, and I was like, here's your, your Mother's Day present, this post. And that's what I did. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So wh <laughs> what did you do, Steve? Did you do something good, something romantic? Uh, I'm sure we went out to eat. Other than that, uh, yeah, probably the, the whole flowers thing, all yeah. that good stuff. But Does anyone else out there pizza. other than – right. So does anyone else out there other than me try to get presents for yourself on these occasions? <laughs> is it, like, do you buy something for you and go, you know what, this this gun is for Mother's Day. <laughs> it's a new Glock, honey. <laughs> does anyone do that? I try to sometimes, but not always. No. For, for Father's Day, uh, my wife was at Sam's Club and she uh, came by this great deal on one of those little Segway Minis, the okay. Segway Mini Pro. So mm -hmm. I'm going to try and use that for like video production, get like a nice smooth movement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's practical. All right. So, yeah, we're. It, I think it's pretty much established we're like, uh, we're not really feeling the, the Father's Day thing. Yeah. So, and. Uh, and I think I was asking, I was asking everyone about their, like their dad. So who who wants to talk about their dad first? I mean, your your dad's still with us, right? Right, Derek. Oh yeah. Yeah. So tell us about your dad. Oh, he used to live with me, but he uh, moved out recently. Uh, my dad's in his sixties. He's, uh, I think he, I think he was born in nineteen fifty in Jackson, Mississippi. So he got to witness all the civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s growing up. And uh, to get out of Jackson, Mississippi, he actually joined the army during Vietnam. Wow. And uh, they, they ended up sending him to uh, Germany. And then his brother got drafted for Vietnam and he tried to say place because he had already joined. So, you know, why does his brother have to get drafted? But uh, his brother, my uncle, who's down, who now passed, uh, he said, don't worry about it. He had it. So my dad stayed in Germany. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, that's cool. So you got, I, I think I've seen some videos and stuff like that with your dad. Your dad's real funny. <laughs> yeah. You know? Or at least his reaction to your antics, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's his reaction to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. I mean, do do your sons take after your dad, you think? Or do they just take after you? Well, the oldest takes after my wife, mm -hmm. and my youngest takes after me. Okay. But, but my youngest did get, uh, my he's like addicted to fried chicken already, mm -hmm. and he got that from my dad. He would oh, sit okay. on he would sit on my dad's lap while my dad had chicken, and he would just they would just sit there and pick it apart, and he'd give a little bit, he'd eat it, and yeah, got him hooked. So that's like, that's awesome parenting, you know, <laughs> I think, you know what, I think grandparents are always trying to like spoil the grandkids just to get back at you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or or what, what, what they're doing is, is they're able to um, spoil or give kids stuff and not have to have any repercussions yeah. of that. Yeah. Like crazy wild kids from, from sugar. Yeah. <laughs> So they get the uh, the good feelings of giving the kids the stuff, and then don't have to suffer the consequences. 
<laughs> right. Absolutely, man. I think, you know, uh, I know that that's uh, the situation on my side. So what about you, Steve? What, you know, how, tell us about your dad. My dad was born in 47. Um, okay. He uh, signed up for the Navy. He's uh, He was in Vietnam also. Um, he did uh, 20, I want to say 22 years in the Navy, retired Navy. Uh, did civil service for another 20 something years. Double retirement. Pretty nice. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, he's a he's a good guy. He's a helps us out with anything we need. So yeah, so you know, definitely Father's Day, you got to think about your dad. You know, instead of yep. you know, it's like really, it's not for you, I guess. It's still not <laughs> for us. <laughs> we got to think about you know, when you become a dad, like does that mean like no, don't have to think about my dad anymore because I'm a dad now. Somebody he's got to call like who has to call who when you become a dad. <laughs> Do you have to call your father, or does he have to call you? Pertain, uh, as it pertains I, I, I to what? Still call my dad. Well, I'm talking about like Father's Day. So who calls who first? That's what I'm saying. Oh. Like, what's the etiquette on that? Is it like you have to call your dad still, or should you wait around? Like, hey, how about you call me because I'm a dad now. So you're not even like you. You were my dad, but you're not even doing dad duty. I'm actually on <laughs> dad duty. Yeah. I, my dad's coming over this weekend, so we'll just probably say it. Uh, yeah, we'll say it to each other when he gets here. But oh, okay. There's no. I don't know if anyone knows out there. If there's etiquette. What do you think, Joe? Is there an etiquette on this? <laughs> I, I, I know personally. I always call my dad on Father's Day, and he wishes me Happy Father's Day back. But I mean, I think because, I mean, I'm. You know, he's my dad. I'm not his dad. So I think that's generally how the chain of command work. I would assume <laughs> that's how I do it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess I got to uh, change my ways then. Because <laughs> I thought when I got to fatherhood, someone should call me and go, hey, yeah, congratulations <laughs> to you. Okay. All right. I don't, you know, I don't know. This is, I mean, this is, you know, we could probably go around on it, but you know what? Let's talk about some things that are on our minds here. So anything going on in the gun world? We're all gun guys. Anything going on, going on you guys want to talk about? Who wants to let's uh, you know what? Let's talk about these escaped convicts in uh, Tennessee. Anyone see this in the news? Yeah. 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 Um, Who's you're you're in Tennessee. You're in Tennessee, Derek. So is that anywhere near to where you're at? I don't think so. Uh, Was it just across the border Um, from Georgia? Because weren't they like Georgia convicts or something? Um. I think okay. they're out of out of Atlanta. I think so. Yeah. yeah, they were Georgia, but I thought they got into Tennessee. I thought that like yeah, they, I thought they got, they got into Tennessee, but it wasn't anywhere near me. I live uh, practically in Kentucky. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you're so. yeah you're far up. So what do you think? I mean, obviously, for anyone out there who doesn't know about it, which at this point you should know about it, these two they were on a bus, and my understanding is they overpowered the two guards, killed them, took their guns, then um, held up. A husband and wife and st- tied them up, stole their car, and then they were on the run. The the cops caught up to them, got into a shootout on the highway. They crashed. And I think when they crashed, they lost control of the guns or whatever, and they ran out of the car. And then they were trying to get onto someone's property to either get another car or do whatever. But this guy, the homeowner of this property, happened to be armed. And, uh, you know, I mean... He captured those guys basically and then called his neighbor and uh, you know, I mean, I think he had a, I don't know if it was a rifle or something. I have to check it out, but basically he held him at gunpoint, called his neighbor and then both of those guys held him until the cops came. I don't think yeah. it's, it's being a good citizen, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. The thing I think about it is that, um, you know, a lot of them, you know, I didn't really, to me, I felt like they buried the lead in the stories about it because they didn't really want to say that this is why, yeah, this is why we need guns. I I don't think they wanted to have that conversation, that this is exactly why. They won't say that. Yeah. So like when it came to the uh, baseball, the congressman that got shot during the baseball practice, the, uh, I think it was the mayor, or was it the governor there? The governor, the you governor, ninety-three million. Yep. Governor? Yeah, oh, yeah. ninety-three million. Ninety-three million. People oh, oh, died. McAuliffe. Yeah, yeah. Per yeah. Day. yeah. I mean, I mean, he didn't waste any time to try to use that, you know, mm-hmm. to push a little 
anti-gun narrative that he wanted. Yeah, to. but so just, so my question, like, where did he come? Like, how come the words "93 million people die" of like? I like the way he says he's not going to talk about gun control, and then the first thing he talks about is gun control. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but how how come ninety the you know how come the words "93 million people die every day" came out of his mouth? But he I, I've go, heard I've heard two reasons for that. One reason could be possibly that he said he said it on purpose knowing that 93 million that would send shocks into people that don't actually understand or paid attention to what he was actually saying or knew, you know, math, <laughs> that they would hear it and be shocked. And then there's the other side, you know, he said it was just a, he just misspoke, but I mean, to say million, I mean, that was a specific word after that. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I mean, some part of your brain ha has to go. If you're going to say 93 million, you might as well say 93 billion. And he yeah. said it two or three times, too. He had time to correct himself, and he didn't until the very end. Yeah, but what number was he trying to say? Uh, I think 93, I think 9300, I think is what he was trying to say. Or 93, 93 I'm not sure. Yeah, so, exactly. Well, fairly, well, that's, far number, way, that's way off. Yeah, way off 93 million. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, I actually think. Are you there? I, I, th I don't know if we, Joe, we lost your audio. The videos. I think we lost the video too. It looks like it's frozen. Yeah. Oh, I was back. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. So you know what? I mean, like to me, I think, a, you know, a mistake, if you were listening to the news with the, with the shooting of the congressman, there was an FBI agent that she was getting interviewed and she said, um, she basically referred to semi-automatic as automatic. I was actually watching that and I just like fell back. I was like, damn, why wasn't I, you know, why wasn't my phone rolling on it? But obviously I'm not the only one that caught that because what she was saying is that with a regular rifle, you would hear pop and then pop and pop. But with a semi-automatic, you hear pop, 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 like that. And I was like, okay. He used an SKS too. He didn't use an evil black rifle. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, there's so many, uh, you know, like she's saying that she meant to say full auto or whatever, and I get that. That's a little, you know, we can stretch it that far if we want to. Um, but 93 million, that's like a, t a totally, totally different category, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, let me see. Where's Joe? Did he? I I'm right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, you froze for a second. You want to continue what you were saying? Oh, sure. I was just saying that uh, he, mu he must have meant was trying to say something about maybe 93 uh because even 9300 wouldn't make yeah, sense 300 um you know cause you add those numbers up and it just won't, won't add up yeah yeah there's not you know and and we can't say that he was talking about the world or <laughs> yeah know, it's it's just too weird it's just too crazy and yeah maybe this is just one of those things like if you know if you do or say something it's the clickbait he clickbaited us yeah yeah Right? You think maybe that's what went down? Maybe. He, yeah. he, just, he just did it for shock value where people go, ooh, that's a lot of people. Maybe we should do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of things I don't like about Terry McAuliffe. I mean, you know, Virginia, Virginia, I think, is uh, gone, man. Virginia used to be like a good gun state. You know, I think it's obviously you still have, um, you know, you, you can still have guns. I mean, they took away reciproc like um, where your CCW reciprocated to Virginia. They took that away for a little while and then they they put it back. But it's, you know, they're definitely trying to do things there to uh, block gun ownership, which is I, I can't believe that people in Virginia are letting that happen. Anyone care to comment on that, Steve? It's 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 hard to stop legislation and and things like that once it starts happening. Some people, uh, uh, mostly in the northern states, don't agree with the, you know, the way we feel about firearms. And unfortunately, that's the way America's turning. Seems like. Yeah, but we've got you know Virginia is still in the south. On, on you know, I mean, but I guess it's kind of getting taken over, right? You have a yeah. lot of people coming from up north down to Virginia, and that's changing things. It's close to D.C., close to Maryland, so we're kind of losing that. It's it's a it's a cancer that's taken over America. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have to look out for this kind of stuff here in Florida. I mean, I don't know if you guys, I don't know, 
who follows Florida. Obviously, Steve and I are in Florida, and Florida had this thing where doctors were asking people, and this is happening, I guess, all over the country. You guys can tell me what's the what's going on in your state. It's happening but, with the VA too. Yeah, I mean, they were asking whether or not you had guns, and then Florida tried to block that and create a law, but that law has been defeated now. So now here in Florida, the doctors can't ask you about gun ownership. They can or can't? No, they can. They can, yeah. They can. yeah the doctors got their way. They pretty much won that battle. Which, why it really matters in any case at all. It, it shouldn't matter. <laughs> it's none of their business, really. The VA, they try to throw in the whole, well, because of PTSD and all this stuff, but all the guys that I know that have PTSD, I mean, they wouldn't hurt it. I don't think that they would hurt anybody or do anything with the guns that they have, but that's just me. Yeah, regardless, what are they collecting that data for? What does it have to do with anything? What does it have to do with your... You know, what does this gun have to do with my health other than, yeah, sure. I mean, you can have some kind of uh, accidental discharge or something else can happen with the gun, but something else can happen with anything else that you have, a car, you know, I mean, anything. Do you have knives in your house? Do you have steps? <laughs> do you have five-gallon buckets? Five-gallon assault buckets. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's so many things. Do you have a pool? Do you have this thing, you know? Do your kids leave toys around the house that you might trip over and die on? <laughs> Legos. Legos. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. Yeah, Legos Ow. are pretty, yeah, those are pretty uh, evil, being Especially dangerous. Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, like, how does this become relevant? What's the plan behind this, you know? How does this, how does this information then affect our health care that we're given? Well, and I think the case that, that, um, that created the law in Florida is because the doctor asked and then this woman said that she did have guns and then the doctor refused to treat her. That doesn't make any sense. Why, why would the fact that her owning weapons stop? I mean, why, why would he stop treating her? The, the, they're, trying, her? they're trying to draw a narrative somehow that you're a bad parent if you have this dangerous evil machine in your house. Uh, wow. that, that's exactly where it's coming from. And you, you know how as a new parent, as, especially as a new parent, some, let's say somebody's not into guns, but they happen to own a gun, be it you know, <laughs> their grandfather's shotgun or their you know, deceased father's hunting rifle, whatever the case may be. So they're not really a gun gun owner, they just happen to have one. Yeah, they have I think uh, I'm looking at this. It says that, um, so I misspoke on that. It says that she refused to answer, and because she refused to answer, the doctor refused to provide her care. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So basically they're saying you've got to become a liar, which I guess, hey, that's the truth, you know. I wouldn't tell these people. I wouldn't give them that kind of information. Yeah. You know, but it's really, it's weird. Where are we going with this? And uh, the, the thing I ask myself is how did the Florida Supreme Court, you know, let this die? I mean, who, who the hell's in the Florida Supreme Court and how can we change those guys out? Definitely, yeah. It's uh, Florida seems to go either way on firearms. They like to uh, pass some laws that make absolutely no sense at all, but then some that they pass, you know, are are, are decent. Uh, a lot like the three day waiting period on a pistol, unless you have a concealed carry permit. Uh, some states don't even require, you know, three day waiting period. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, pretty soon, pretty soon, you know, it's possible. I'm not saying, I shouldn't say pretty soon. It's possible that Florida can also not be in the South. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, because we're always teetering on the edge. You know, I think that um, we're always, you know, we're always teetering on the edge. And, and Florida is also one of those places that people come to from other parts of the country. And I, I don't really understand, like, how, like the thing that makes you leave these liberal parts of the country is the, the debt and, you know, all the restrictive laws and all that. And then you go to another state because of this stuff and then you get up to the same crap. You know, you, you still wind up supporting the same. You move locations and then you bring this thing with you and you don't think that, you know, that maybe you're the problem. Like what you believe, what you're accepting, what you're allowing people to do.
You know, any anyone have any? Uh, did did all you guys freeze? Is anyone out there? I'm still here. Oh, okay. All right. You, you guys, you guys must be tired. Come on, wake up, guys. We're we're let's paying get, attention. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Engrossed. Um, we're engrossed by your yeah. entrancing yeah. voice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good one. Good one, Joe. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if this is a comment that Lola's posting here that uh, VA has a hotline and you press seven for suicide. Yeah. Is that uh, what is that about? Well, I mean, there's a whole there's a whole thing where the uh, there's 22 veterans that commit or 22 veterans or active that commit suicide every every day or is it every day? Yeah, it's yeah, every, every day. day. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was a big push with all the VA, uh, all the little scandals they had about not taking care of people. So there was a huge push in the VA system to ask every every vet at like every specific time what they were feeling. Like if you went, it doesn't matter what you went to the VA for, they'd ask you, are you feeling okay? Are you feeling like hurting anybody or yourself today? Well, so, oh, wow. I mean, don't you think that's something that can push buttons? It can. I, I think it, I, I think they meant well by it, but they could have uh, been more tactful when asking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and again, that, that, that depends on the, the bedside, you know, manner of the, the PA, the nurse or the doctor that, that you're seeing at the time. Right. So I think that you're the, you're our only veteran on the, on this panel, right, Derek? I don't know. Uh, Joe, Steve, any of you guys veterans? No. No. So you're our, you're our expert on this then, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, I mean, obviously you're a veteran. What, what do you feel about, like, like where do you, where's, what's your opinion of where this kind of stuff's coming from? It's an obvious problem and, and guys are having, you know, trouble out there. Where do you think it's coming from? And then what do you think about how this has been dealt with? Because I know you, you obviously are going through the VA system. Yeah. Um, I think it's, like, part of me wants to go all, you know, conspiracy about it and say it's, it's, it's a plan to try and take away uh, veterans' guns. Um, there's a big, like, when I was getting out, or before I was getting out, when I had soldiers that were getting ready to get out, I would always, you know, tell them, hey, when you go to uh, out process, there's this, if, if someone's hurt in the, in the military and they're getting out and they know they're going to get a percentage of, like, disability, they try to go for as much as they can. And... You know, if you want to do that, whatever. But when it came, when it comes to PTSD, I told all my guys to don't claim it unless you actually have it, and it's like a serious problem because the PTSD can lead to you know mental deficiency and make it so that you, when you go to purchase a weapon, that it comes back that you can't. Right. So. And I've noticed, like, um, I, I hear this from a lot of veterans that when they go to buy something and their and their background check always gets uh, held up or something weird always happens there, right? Or it's it's common for that to happen. I've I've seen it happen. It's never happened to me. Um, I've actually been shocked that it's never happened to me. But I've seen I've seen it where it's happened to guys before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean. You know, how do you feel about how this stuff is being dealt with? Like, first of all, like, how do you think that just us, the, the, the rest of us that never served, how do you think we deal with it when we're dealing with you? And how do you think, like, the VA, the system, how does the system deal with it? Deal with what? You know, with, um, like, there, there is this issue. I know there was the, what was it, like, 22 guys? Because I know there was something that was yeah. going on and people were doing push-ups and all that. Yeah, you know, this... Yeah, does that did that stuff help? Does that make you feel better? I mean, you know. No, I actually uh, got into a debate with somebody on Instagram over the whole 22 push-ups a day thing. And I was like, okay, thanks for doing push-ups. What is that going to actually do? It's going to bring awareness? Okay, well, what is your reach? You know, how many people are you going to make, you know, aware that this happens every day? You know, the best thing to do is to kind of like, kind of like, uh, Charity, you know, mm -hmm. why, why should I get taxed out the butt to provide for other people when I can just go and, 
you know, help the people that, that are in need myself. Right. You know, where no one's going to take a chunk of the money that I'm, you know, giving them. Mm -hmm. So did you feel, uh oh, there, go, there goes the kids. Yeah. Speaking of Father's Day. I yeah, know. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be right back, guys. No, okay. Yeah. No, I know these boys, these boys, uh, they got, they're healthy. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they're good kids, though. They always crack me up when I, when I see Derek's kids, man. They have a good time. So do you guys have any opinion of this while we're waiting for Derek to come back? I mean, obviously, we're like on the civilian side, but what do you guys think about this whole situation with veterans? You know, I've, I, I can't necessarily say for sure. Um, you know, I, uh, um, I have veterans that, you know, friends, friends who are veterans that, uh, joined in on that. Um, that was something that I did, uh, uh, that was, many months ago i don't remember how long ago um you know uh but you know they, they none of them seemed to indicate that was uh they took it negatively or they had any problem with it i know there were a lot who actually joined in uh as well um back i think most of this was back around the time of shot show just before that mm -hmm. um and it was you know toward the end of last year as well so when it really kind of hit uh but i I, I don't know. I can't say for sure. I mean, you know, I, I think everybody receives these things, you know, the same way we saw. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. You know, it, it's just yeah. like some people who, you know, you, some people use the term brother, uh, you know, be it whatever, whatever the case may be. I know there are one or two folks in the, uh, uh, in the, in the veteran community who, you know, didn't like the term, you know, referring to somebody else's brother. Uh, cause I guess they felt they had some sort of monopoly on it. Um, Oh really? I okay, because I think there's lots of people <laughs> no, that have that. <laughs> you know. Yeah, everybody takes stuff differently. I mean, I, you know, I guess I could say to my brother, "Hey, I'm, I'm you know, my, my real brother. Uh, you know, yeah. hey, you know, I can't call <laughs> you brother anymore because you know we right. we didn't serve in the military together, so." Right. Also, brother. we're like bro we're brothers in arms. You know, you got black people call each other brothers. You know, and <laughs> right. I mean, this yeah, I mean, yeah, like you know what? Someone's like locked this down now. <laughs> uh, uh, apparently, there are a few people who did. You know, I I don't want to. You right. know, I. I I don't want to necessarily make fun of that. You know, for them, it may have a special connotation, but sure. at the same time, you know, that's been used no matter what it is, you know, for, you know, for, for millennia, people have referred to, you know, wh whether actual brothers or not, you know, I mean, going back as far as yeah. recorded history, uh, you know, that term has been used. It's yeah. I mean, kind of like, you know, somebody using the term operator, right? I mean, the yeah. first real operators were plugging, plugging things in and out of a big phone uh, kiosk, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And they were actually all women at the time. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's a. What did you want to say about this, Steve? I don't want to cut you off. You're going to say something. Uh, uh, not much. Um, the whole veterans, uh, the whole veteran suicide thing. Uh, it's horrible. We should be treating our veterans uh, really better than we treat ourselves. It's, it's because of them that we're free, and uh, we get to enjoy all our guns and all our freedom and everything we have in America. Um, Actually, a buddy of mine that's on our YouTube channel fairly often, uh, Chris Peranto, Tonto, from mm -hmm. the 13 Hours fame, everything. He uh, he was just in a music video to uh, All That Remains, the band, All That Remains. Uh, they did a song called Madness, and it's completely dedicated to veteran suicide and everything. It's got the hotline number at the end of it and everything. And he uh, He's talking a lot about that and trying to get more awareness out for that. Yeah. You know... I agree with you that with that. And I think I also agree with Joe because this is like a weird situation of, you know, we definitely should do something, but I'm always worried that what we're doing is just like, you know, it's like the ice bucket challenge. Okay. We do this ice bucket thing and that we let all our friends on social media know that we care. And, and, and I get it. I understand it. And, and maybe it makes some veterans actually feel better, but then I wonder, is like, is there something else we could do? Does it help if we just talk to people that we know that are veterans and try to talk to them? Or maybe they don't want to talk. I mean, it's a weird situation. You don't know what to do, what to say, and maybe they don't look at us the same way because we didn't serve with them, you know, um, and so maybe they're no, not I the would, ones they I would, want. I wouldn't say, right. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say they don't, they don't look, they look at you differently because you didn't serve. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, at least no, not the guys that I know. Right. Yeah. I mean, what what I'm what I'm asking is like, what can we really do? I mean, what's something that's actually going to be 
that's going to help. Obviously, nothing's going to help 100 percent. But what can we re what can we really do? Can we help by sitting down and talking to these guys or, you know, is there something that we can do that's really going to be helpful versus we're like, OK, let's do this. Let's do this publicity stunt. And, you know, it, I know it may make some people feel better, but does it really help the situation at all? What do you think about that? I'd say listening, listening helps a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just, you know, don't tell you know, like, hey, you can tell me all your problems, but if you just let them know that, you know, they they're free to talk if they need to. That's good. Okay, so I know a lot of guys think that talking about it or or showing any uh, showing that anything affected you can kind of be like a sign of weakness, but it's that's not always the case or really not the case at all, but that's also, that's how a lot of guys feel. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, th this is like, this is really something that I do worry about because, you know, as we've said already, these are guys who go out there, you know, whether they agree with what, who, who's in the white house or what the war is, or, you know, what's the reason for this fight or how, whatever you want to think, you know, whatever you want to think about it, these are guys who go out there and they do it. And if, and, um, you know, it's, it's a big deal. And what do we do about that? And, you know, are we actually effective? So I, I know I'm always willing to listen. I'd like to hear about, you know, what people went through. And, and I know if, if, you know, if there's anyone out there, like if you want to talk to someone, if there's other people out there, I see like right now we've got real Kojo listening. Lola is uh, giving me um, a comment that he said, as a veteran who deals with a disability that comes nonstop, uh, that comes with nonstop pain, I think about suicide, but I will not take my own life. You know, I think that's, you know, that's tough to hear that those guys are going through that. And I know this is something that people go through who never served. You know, we all go through this. We all have things in life and we think, man, what if this was like a video game and we could just reset? Um, but, you know, it, it's a thing that you leave a lot of, you know, maybe you solve it for you and you put the lights out, but you leave a lot of people behind and they're the ones that suffer from it. And before you even go that route, if you think that no one cares or no one's willing to talk to you, there are people out there who are willing to listen. And I think talking helps. I know it helps me. That's why I talk so much. <laughs> yeah, talking. So. Talking and, and having someone that that will listen without judgment is, uh, mm -hmm. is really good. Okay. So you think that's like a big thing, like just talk and listen, but don't, you know, like maybe don't, you know, well, don't try to like fix it or be judgmental about whatever it was you went through, right? Yeah. Don't try to, don't try to fix it. Don't try to be judgmental. I mean, for, for a lot of cases, I mean, I shouldn't say a lot of cases, but for some cases, it's really helpful for them to get it out and to actually talk about it. Um, yeah. I think a friend of mine was uh, talking about, there's a, there's a kind of a fringe treatment for it where they, uh, maybe it's not French, but there's a treatment for it where they can actually go in and, uh, I don't know if it's fry nerves or what, but right. I think there's, there's some like drugs that are involved with it. I'll have to look it up. I'll okay. Have to look it up for my so it's it sounds like you're talking about something that's really invasive, right? Not really invasive. Okay. Just not. It's not you know. Common medicine, you know. Okay. Like we're we're gonna get like fringe medicine where it's like, oh, that that's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. yeah, I completely forget what it was because we talked about it one night for a long time because he suffered from it and he was really wanting to go down and do the trial. I think they were doing it in, in Atlanta. I don't know if he moved down there for it, but that's where he's living now. Okay. Yeah, if someone knows about any uh, treatments and things out there, I mean, you know, and also, like I said, man, like I'm always open to anyone who knows me that is a veteran that wants to talk about that or anyone in general, man, if you've got if you've got things that are really bothering you to that to that extent and you feel like, you know, these these dark thoughts are going through your mind and you think you're out there alone, you know, you're not really you're, you're not 
you know, you're not out there alone. There are people who care about you and definitely, re you know, reach out to someone, you know, including me. Yeah, I know I talk a lot, but I also listen. I can, you know, the ears are open. <laughs> You know, okay, so now I'm going to switch. I mean, that's, you know, probably not like the, you know, the happiest of subjects, but uh, there was something that I that I saw that came, I just remember this, and we were talking about Father's Day and everything. Have you guys seen this dad that was trying to teach his kids about gun safety and wound up um, accidentally shooting his daughter? What? Yeah. Did, yeah. did you see that? Yeah. It's it's almost unbelievable. I can't. Uh, I think we were talking about this earlier. I can't imagine uh, in any instance where, no matter what point of my life I've been at, and I've raised uh, you know girls from every age. The oldest is nineteen now. My younger two are ten and twelve. But um, in no matter what period of my life I've been a firearms owner, never in my wildest dreams could I imagine trying to teach one or any of my children about firearm safety and pointing a fire at that firearm at them. I've never in my wildest dreams, I don't care how unloaded I thought it was, I, that is exactly what you don't want to teach them is okay to do, and I don't know. Yeah. I, I can't wrap my mind around that. There has to be something more to that than than, wow. than what's being reported, I would think. I mean, it, I, I just, I can't wrap my mind around that idea that anyone would, would where, consciously where, do that. Where did that happen at? Yeah, so here's the here's the article. It says uh, that it's dad, says he fatally shot daughter while, te while teaching gun safety. A father in Indiana is facing five felonies after inadvertently shooting his nine-year-old daughter while he says he was teaching his three children not to play with guns, later telling a responding officer, she's dead, she's dead, I thought it was empty. Um, he's 33 years old, uh, he shot her uh, once in the head after telling his two sons about the danger of handguns in the family's home. Yeah, this was Saturday, and then his daughter died less than 30 minutes later. I mean, this is, like, really horribly tragic. Um, you know, and, and I think that, yes, we need to teach our children about gun safety. And if you're not really up on gun safety, if you're not up on it enough, if you don't feel confident about it, you should, like, there's people you can turn to. Lots of people out there will help you. The NRA, there's lots of organizations. Um, you know, we took our kids to... You know, I always think it's good to when you're trying to teach things to your family to go external. Like it doesn't always have to be from you, even if you think you know everything about this. Um, yeah, so this this is like horrible, and definitely this is the reason why you know you say don't point don't point a firearm at something you don't want to destroy. Treat every firearm like it's loaded and all that kind of stuff. And I think you know it, it's like this guy. Um, Either he just didn't know about safety and he was trying to teach it and this genuinely just went wrong or, you know, like you said, Joe, maybe something else is going on. You know, um, was there something about? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, you know, um, that's a tough thing, right? We're, we're parents and this is like, you know, that's like the worst thing in life to do as a parent. And anyone out there who has young children and you're worried about them when it comes to firearms and you're worried about them being safe, you know, honestly, there's lots of places out there that you can you can reach out to to teach them about gun safety before you get into it yourself. Yeah, definitely get some training before you go uh, trying to train someone else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and take this as a cautionary tale. I don't care if you think like Joe was saying, even if you, you know, even if you've triple check that thing and it's empty, one of the things you want to teach your children is if you find this thing, treat it like it's loaded. Don't even touch it. You know, don't even put your hands on it. Leave it, you know, where it is and, and maybe go tell someone, hey, I saw this thing here, but don't pick it up. Don't go to anyone with it. And if you want to teach them things over the course of them growing up, you what you would want to teach them is don't point firearms at anyone. You know, I, I think that's a really important thing for children to learn. Obviously, you know, um, when we use them to, to defend ourselves is a completely different thing. But I think at that stage, they're not on that level. Which I don't know if, if any of y'all grew up doing the same things I did. We always had toy pistols, toy guns with the little red mm -hmm. cap. 
and the little red cap wasn't any fun, so you always had to break that off, and make it look like a real gun, you know. <laughs> but you always shot those at each other, cap guns and stuff. And later you learn how bad that actually is. You know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, you know, I think it's good, and I th and it, there's some good things about it, and obviously some bad things about it. When I was a kid, those things didn't have any red nothing in them. Yeah. They just looked like real guns. Yeah. You know, um, and and they were real cap guns and stuff like that, and we really enjoyed it. We enjoyed playing with it. I mean, we, you know, even if we didn't have those things, we would take anything and make it into a gun. Mm -hmm. And I noticed my sons are like that. You know, I never bought them toy guns, but they would just make them. You know, I never, you know, pushed mm -hmm. them in that direction. They just went there. So, you know, this is that thing. But once you graduate from from the level of these things being toys, you need to start to teach them. And obviously in, t in today's society, that's why they try to do things to change that around. Um, but, you know, once, once they graduate, you have to teach them that. And even with my kids, I went to BB guns. You know, yeah. those are the first things that they actually got to get their hands on and shoot. And the funny thing is, you know, I have a range and everything. And my, my older son, he went out with his BB gun on the range, and instead of shooting at the steel and the targets I have out there, which is one thing, he shot, like if you ever watch my channel, I have an ambulance <laughs> <laughs> on my range, and he shoots out the window of the ambulance. <laughs> you know, and uh, of course he was on punishment, and, you know, and he got a lot of talking to, and then I'm, I chastised him, and now I'm putting it in this live video. <laughs> and you know, we can go on and on, but I mean, and, and I use that to say, listen, this thing you should not point, you know, at anything that you don't want to destroy and, and use it as something to keep teaching those lessons. Um, and in today's world, that's, that's what you would want to do, but you can't get away from it. You know, there's kids who are getting in trouble in school because they make their hand like a gun and they point it at someone and then, oh, there's like zero tolerance. You're in trouble now. Or you had the kid that chewed his pop tart into the shape of a gun and got what was he expelled for it? Yeah. So yeah. I think that we're like I think we're going overboard in some ways, but yes, yeah. we want it we we want to be safe and um, you know, we definitely want to teach our kids that, you know, and perhaps like what they did back in the old days when these when these things looked real and all that, you know, that that wasn't so good. And uh, you know, that's something that we've changed today. Yeah. Right? But um, it doesn't well, stop things from happening. There's still kids that have gotten killed by police officers, for example, in the news because they were pointing toy guns at, at or, the cops. Or airsoft guns. They look yeah. very, very similar to real guns. Yeah. And well, I'm how, how, big, how big of a problem was it back in, back in those days when the, guns, when the toy guns were the way they were? I mean, did you I ever I, to point one of those toy guns at a police officer? Oh, no. No, no, no. I no, no. no. That, that was one thing my parents taught me was if you're in the neighborhood and you're shooting the toy guns at each other and a cop pulls up, you drop the gun immediately because they will kill you. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's real, if it's fake, whatever. They can't think that you have a gun. Yep. Yeah, I don't, you know, um, you know, that that's a good question, Derek. I think that, um, no, I don't remember ever doing anything like that. And, um, you know, we also did it. You know, we didn't get out there in public like that with those things. Those are things yeah. we did in the backyard with our friends. And that's, I mean, we didn't even point those. I don't really remember pointing those at my parents even, you know, like trying <laughs> yeah. to play. Like your your parents didn't really play with you. <laughs> exactly. Right. So so you kind of knew the line of like who was an adult and who wasn't. And then, the, you know, there's this kid and we're going, to, you know, we're going at each other. And then I think, you know what, I honestly, I think there just wasn't as many cops back then as there are today. That's true, but uh, yeah. I also I also think it's a parenting thing, and it's really hard. It's really hard to say that, like, because you, with a kid that's around you know eight years old or whatever, and they're playing outside or around the neighborhood, you can't see them the whole time, you know, unless you're mm -hmm. there playing with them and stuff like that. Right. <clears throat> I remember me and my wife were were driving home one day, and uh, some some neighborhood kids, they hid behind a bush. And they, there was two of them. They both had toy guns. Now they're like bright orange and all that stuff, so it's obvious they weren't real. Right. But they they jumped out of the bush right when our our car pulled up, and they started pointing it at the gun at the at our car, and and it startled me enough to make me swerve a little bit. Right. Well, did you did you guys um 
you know, that's, yeah, that could be a thing. I mean, and, and did you guys see this thing in the, I think I saw it on Facebook, a video that there was a, a white couple that some black kids had some kind of like toy gun or air something. And they were, they were, um, they were pointing it at this white couple in a parking lot. And then, then the, uh, the, the husband went and got his actual gun. Did you guys see that? No. No. Yeah, there there was this thing that came up, and then they were like, "Oh my God, you're getting a real gun!" And pointed, you know, I don't I don't know if he pointed the gun at them, but he went and got the real gun because they had some kind of gun. But I think it was kind of obvious that it was a toy. From mm. from what I saw in the video, and even his reaction, he wasn't really reacting like he was scared that they were going to do something to him. But maybe he was trying to back them down. I mean, it's uh, so yeah. Did he did he leave the scene and go get a gun and come back? No, no. They, this was in the parking lot, so he okay. went to his car and he got okay. his gun out of the car. And these kids, but these kids were messing with them, you know. So for their, I'm not taking sides here in this situation. Okay. It's a, it's a weird thing. I think these kids were messing with them, and they had, they had something, but it was obviously like a toy or something like that. But then, you know, this guy went and got a real gun, and they were like, well, you know, what are you doing? The kids were like, what are you doing? Why are you getting a real gun? <laughs> And and what's what's going on in our society on, on there, you know, perfect storms, that's how things go wrong. When both both sides decide that they're not gonna back down and they're just gonna go to like ultimate ignorance, you know, or you know, level ten of, of being pissed off, because these are grown ups and they know obviously these are kids, and then these are kids who are just like, you know, pushing it and don't have respect. For these grown-ups so that's how that's how things go wrong in our society today which back in, in my day when i was growing up um yeah somebody else's parents will beat you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know i it's mean i was spankings at school right yes <laughs> i remember like i mean both my parents were teachers so um you know like if i got in trouble with someone else's parents i would get lashes over there and then when my mom <laughs> finds out it's extra lashes for getting lashes in the first place <laughs> yeah. you know so um yeah it's crazy okay so i i've got a question here like people um you know people want to know there's been a lot of talk about training and trainers and all that kind of stuff i i, I covered this a little bit here on the channel and our live stuff i don't know if any of you guys had a chance to see that. Any uh, comments on that from you guys? Like you want to you want to wade into this whole training thing? I think people are saying this like, you know, there's obviously different kinds of training, different kinds of trainers, and you know, people are doing yeah. some fancy things, maybe some advanced things, maybe some things that are like don't make any sense, and it's causing confusion and people out there who. Because we always say in the gun community that one thing people don't do, and we're all guilty of it, is not getting enough training. So um, some people, I guess, want to know what my panel here that I have tonight, you guys, what do you think about this whole training thing? Is this in regards to VOTA? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing this is in regards to that, yeah. I really don't know. I would, before you uh, interviewed him, I was, I was uh, going to call him and actually drive down and do like a, a video interview with him to see, you know, where he's coming from and what his actual, his standpoint is. But then uh, Schwell said that you beat me to it. And I was like, what? And I checked Facebook and I saw oh, that okay. you had uh, interviewed him. Yeah. I mean, I think you still could. I mean, did you, did yeah. you, when you, when you watched that, did you feel like your questions were answered there or? Uh, I didn't get to watch the whole thing. I got I got to watch the beginning of it. Um, mm -hmm. I need to go back and watch the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, you know, I I think that because I covered it doesn't mean that like, it's fully covered. Yeah. You know, <laughs> all, um, I mean, we covered it for a while. You know, so maybe I don't know that really. Um, how should I put this? I don't know how serious of a thing that is. I think personally, you know, and I want you guys to tell me what you think about it, but I think that it's the buyer beware. You know, people want to get training, think about what you're doing and who you're going to to train and spend some time looking them up. In this day and age, there's lots of information out there on people. And if when you come across, if you don't come across any information, then, you know, I would say stay away from it. But you know, if you don't come across information and you go, it's on you. And if you come across information on these people, there's lots, most trainers out there have videos and websites and Facebook things, and there's lots of information you can get about them. You know, do some research and look it up and then make a decision 
But once you do it's, it, it's like it's like having a it's like getting a big purchase, like purchasing a, a, a car or a truck or something. You know, you don't just go and buy the first thing on the first uh, first lot that you come across. Mm-hmm. Around, find out what the best deal is or what the best vehicle is for you. Right. Yeah, some, and I'm not. Again, mm-hmm. some people some people don't have the luxury of tra- traveling far to get training. So a lot of people get the training that's closest to them. I know a lot of a lot of guys in Tennessee go to uh, tactical aid or tactical mm-hmm. response. Mm-hmm. Uh, James, and then I know that James gets a lot of flack for a lot of stuff that happens in his classes, and a lot of stuff that comes out of his mouth because he doesn't know how to. Mm-hmm. I think first sometimes, but yeah. Um, and this is the thing about training. I think that it's it's such a subjective thing, and there's so many yes. different people that are doing it that you really and and you know what? Think about where's your level, right? Like, what level are you at? Are you introductory? And I think if you're just getting into this and you want to get some kind of training, the best place to go is probably the NRA. They have all the basic stuff they focus on safety uh, i don't know what you guys think about that but do that and then graduate from that yeah definitely yeah yeah you know what What do you think joe is joe i don't know if joe is there or if he i can, yeah. can you hear me yes <laughs> all right I, I if if i drop out and unbuffer again i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna say good night um because I, I i live out here in the middle of nowhere my internet's acting up right now but i think the short answer to that is uh doing some research and hopefully getting some first-hand information from from people that are in your area, because as we saw um, with with some folks, they may get a NRA uh, cert, and uh, it may not be uh, be the best training you may want to attend necessarily. So I think uh, getting firsthand uh, references, as well as trying to do a little bit of research and find out where they got their training from, as well, uh, not just NRA. Because I, I there's some required classes for different states that I've had to take. Indiana doesn't have them. Where uh, you know we've gone through uh, instructors, be it Illinois, back when I was trying to get an Illinois license before they decided nobody from out of state could get it, and um, yeah, just because you've got a cert after your name doesn't really mean much. Um, you know, you've got to do a lot, a lot of research. I, I would say. Yeah, for sure. Were you going to say something there, Steve? No, I mean, uh, like you said a while ago, it's it's good to do your research. It's like buying a car. It's it's an investment. And you definitely want to make sure that you go with somebody that's qualified to teach you. I mean, if they're just making stuff up on the fly, it's it's probably not a good thing to take their class, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah, and the, one, one good thing about James Yeager is he just doesn't teach. I mean, he's always on the road taking classes from other people. Yeah, yeah he is. So mm-hmm. a lot of knowledge, and he's, you know, trying to pass that knowledge on to people. And it, it, it does seem like when uh, things go – astray in his classes that uh, it's usually when he's not there. It's usually when he's out of town or, or doing something else. Or if it's a, uh, when they've done one of the traveling classes. Right. I don't know that he does a lot of, I think he does obviously train people. He owns a, a training school. I don't know that yeah. he actually gives a lot of the classes because he's got a lot of instructors that work for him. Um, yeah. You know, um, so sometimes in Camden, if he's there in Camden, he'll change when the class is going on, and he'll give his two cents. You know, yeah, where is it? yeah, and obviously he's the you know he's the the uh, the headmaster, I guess you could put it, of what they're doing over there. Um, you know, <laughs> be careful. <laughs> You're right there. I think he just broke his computer. <laughs> no, yeah, he, yeah, those, yeah, he went after the boys. Yeah, so see, Father's Day, man, Father's Day. Yeah, yeah. You know what I can say to people? Like, um, this, this is my take on it. It's like I would tell my sons when they're looking at girls. You know, you can tell crazy when you see it. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. yeah. If, if you're looking at someone and your brain is saying there's something wrong here, this is crazy. Don't ignore that. Don't ignore your instincts when 
you're dealing with people, you know, or, or when you're dealing with a company or anything like that, if your instincts say to you, something's wrong here, it probably is. I mean, as human beings, this is how things are set up. So, you, you know, just like you're walking down a street at night and your senses all of a sudden go off, that means you need to look around. But if, if you're in a situation <clears throat> where you're looking at something and it looks crazy to you, yeah, that's probably crazy. Yeah, you know that's the definition. If it looks yeah. crazy to you, it is crazy. And then beyond that, if that thing that looks crazy to you or that person that looks crazy to you, you try to talk to them and they don't think they're crazy, well, that is the actual definition of crazy right there. You know, mo most of the time, uh, you know, people who are crazy have no idea that they're crazy. So they think everybody else is crazy. Right. I know I say crazy a lot, but. <laughs> You know, okay, so it looks like we, it looks like we, uh, well, actually, f first of all, someone says, Hank, do you remember laser tag shootings in New York City? Okay, I don't, I'm not really sure about that. I'm going to have to look that up, laser tag shootings. I don't know. I mean, I don't remember any, so I don't know if that's like a rhetorical question. I used to love laser tag. Yeah, I don't remember there actually being some shootings that were involved uh -huh. around that in New York City. So I'd have to uh, check into it. But, um, you know, we've been doing this for a while. So before we wrap up here, we lost Joe. I want to encourage everyone out there to look up 13C gun reviews. Joe's a good guy. He's been doing this for a while. He's got some really good content up there. Uh, he's probably 13C gun reviews on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, definitely on YouTube. So I will put links and stuff like that in this video to everyone that's appearing here. And then so I wanted to give everyone a chance to plug what they're doing. So I'm going to start with you, Steve. Just uh, tell people how to get in touch with you and tell them about uh, what you're up to on your channel, what's coming up. 904 Outdoors, uh, we're a very pro 2A YouTube channel. Uh, we do reviews on guns, firearms, uh, explosives, all kinds of fun stuff, knives, uh, EDC gear. Um, we're trying to get a little bit more into the medical medical equipment stuff, which would be pretty cool. Um, but we, uh, yeah, we're on Instagram, 904 Outdoors, uh, Pinterest, 904 Outdoors, uh, Twitter, Facebook, um, you just go to 904outdoors.net. takes you directly to our YouTube channel. So uh, All right. cool. we're, working on, we're working on building and trying to get a, a larger fan base, definitely. Absolutely. So <laughs> folks, go out there and subscribe to him. Anyway, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's pretty easy for you to like open another window. Don't stop watching it. <laughs> open another window and then just search 904 Outdoors and definitely subscribe, support him. He's got good stuff. Also, he's a fellow Floridian, so we got to, you know, we got to – you got to promote the Floridians definitely. where we can, where we can, and, and <laughs> yep. where and where it's deserved. So um, definitely check that out. Do you have any upcoming videos people should be looking out for, Steve? Uh, we have some Franklin Armory uh, binary firing system Gen three videos coming up. Uh, a lot of a lot of tests and evaluate on that. So we're going to see how how it runs and if we can destroy it. Okay, very cool. <laughs> and then I think you're one of the few people that has uh, uh, a video, if not a few videos on the double tap trigger is that am i saying it right yes yes we are uh okay very interesting setup um yeah go check out our videos on the double tap trigger it's uh it's something different that's for sure yeah exactly <laughs> if you're if you if you want to know more about these yeah. awesome triggers that are out there check that out okay derek 50 percent tactical what's up so so tell the folks out there you know who you are where they can how they can get in touch with you and what projects you have coming up well, like you said, I'm 50% tactical. Uh, I think I'm going to kind of go away from the tactical part and just be known as Fitty from now on, uh, which is my nickname. But anyways. Uh, why, why is it your nickname in case people don't know out there? I think I know, but I could be wrong. <laughs> oh, well, it, it started because in, um, in Afghanistan, I had a buddy. Uh, he didn't know that I was half white, half black for the longest time. And we were out in Afghanistan, and, and I was talking about it. And he looked at me, he's like, what? You're half white, half black? I'm like, yeah, dude. He's right. like, oh. And then the next day, he's like, hey, I'm going to call you Fitty. But instead of Fitty Cent, like the rapper, I'm going to call you Fitty Per Cent. Because mm -hmm. I'm half white. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, all right. And then mm -hmm. after I lost the arm, uh, he came up to me. He's like, hey, well, now I can only be 50% as tactical as you used to be. Mm -hmm. So when I was thing back in 2011 I that that's what my uh, channel name ended up being mm hmm okay 
So what, um, you know, well, I was going to ask you what part, what's 50%, like which half is black or which half is white, but yeah. <laughs> depends on the day. Know. Yeah, I don't want to, yeah. I don't know if it that's depends on the day. Yeah. It depends on the day. <laughs> Even days, um, um, black and odd days, or is it, it, it yeah, it depends on the day. Yeah. I know you've got the most bodacious General Lee that, I mean, you know, the, you're the only dude yeah. I know that actually has a General <laughs> Lee. <laughs> Yeah. So you get flack for that, and then I'm sure people are like that's racist. So I'm like, which part? Like, which part is being racist to which part? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like when when people give that give me you know crap for having it, very very often. But when they do, it's all always because of the flag that's on top. And mm -hmm. the the thing that they don't realize is the flag that's on top was never the rep, the uh, the um, Confederate flag. It was never the Confederate flag. It it was used as part of because you got you got three versions of the Confederate flag. You got the first national, second, and third national. And the first is what's known as the Bars Star or Stars and Bars, right? And if you look at Georgia uh, Georgia's state flag, mm -hmm. that's the first Confederate or the first uh, national Confederate flag. Yeah. That Georgia f used to have the. Uh, flag which is on top of the general lee they used to have the battle flag in their state flag but because of the connotation of it and somehow got got it passed and replaced it with the actual flag, which is kind of funny but uh um, yeah. yeah like my dad he didn't he didn't know that you know he'd grown up in the 50s and 60s in jackson mississippi seeing that flag flown you know in the worst way possible and right. uh, he thought that it was a Confederate flag for a long time, and then I, I told him like, no, listen, you know, I, I I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, being, you know, a Yankee, and South, I've it's really opened up my eyes a lot, a lot. Like I had no idea how racist and segregated the North is, especially the bigger cities, mm -hmm. where I mean, yeah, there's still self segregation and. Uh, you know, economic segregation down south, but it's not as as it is up north. Yeah, you all you have to do is look at the TV show that was popular for a long time called Friends, <laughs> that took place in New York City. <laughs> you know, and eventually they had to like, like put a token black guy in there. I remember, you know, I was living in New York at the time when when all that was going on, and people were complaining that they didn't have any black friends. And I'll be honest with you, that's that's just the reality. Like I didn't have a problem with it. I liked the show. You know. I, I watched it sometimes, but that was the reality of it. Even up north, even in New York City, even today, people segregate themselves. There's black people that just have black friends and white people that just have like, you know, white friends and maybe there's like every now and then they have like one token friend or whatever that crosses groups. It's, it's, it's what, it's because people want to be like around people that are like them. It's mm -hmm. more familiar, so. Yeah. It's just going to happen that way. Yeah, it's just like, you know, you notice you might have a whole group of friends, uh, and then when you have kids, you're all of a sudden kicked out of the group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I was so. lucky. All my friends, we all, like, started families and had kids at the same time. But sadly, because of the military, a couple of them have moved away from where I am now. But Yeah. So what good. projects What projects do you have coming up, man? Oh, um projects was well i'm going to be starting up the uh the precision rifle video series again uh, okay. the next video should be coming out next week sometime mm -hmm. hopefully if everything goes to plan um going over the uh, uh feeding issues and magazine problems i've been having so Okay, cool. And then I know you have like a um, like a mystery science theater style. Like I saw at least one video that you did with what's the name of that guy? Operator or something? Operator error. Yeah. Operator he's, error, yeah. yeah. He's a satire awesome. character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a satire character uh, made uh, guys you see at the range that think that they're you know tactical ninjas or you know mm -hmm. operators who think they're so high speed. And it's it's making fun of those guys in a, in a point, and just kind of making fun of the the gun community, I guess, in general. We 
we weren't really heavy on it. We were heavy on it when, it when we first started it, when we first started the channel, but then with him being active, still active, and I was the only one that was, uh, that was retired at the time. Okay. We didn't really have time to do the videos like we wanted to, because he was always deployed. And um, recently now though, he's, uh, he got out of the army and uh, we're starting to do uh, videos again. Okay, cool. And then, so you're doing those like mystery. What do you guys call in that series? Have you done more than one? I've seen one. We we've done one fully, but we're gonna we plan on doing a lot more. Uh, we're calling it Opera Hate. Opera where Hate. We just, yeah. We're right. Just yeah. A video that's on the internet doesn't have to be a YouTube video. It doesn't have to be a gun specific video, I guess. But we're just taking stuff and just throwing our commentary on it. Right. And I noticed you did the first one on you. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to do a, 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 a commentary show where we talk crap on other people, you know, it's only fair that I talk crap on myself. And, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, my fail video where I lit the range on fire, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny, actually. I mean, first of all, it's a funny video on its own. It's like, it's a big video <laughs> for you, but it's, it's like, I know when I watched it before you did the opera hate thing. I thought it was funny. I was like, "What the hell?" Watching that video, and then when yeah. you when you did when you redid it recently, I was like cracking up, man. So um, yeah, like the, the video was done when I didn't have a lot of knowledge in editing, and I was I edited it way too quickly, and I put it out there because I knew it was going to get a lot of views. And uh, by the time I, I looked back at it and saw that it had so many views, I saw the mistakes that I had in the video. I was like, I can't take it down. It's it's already no, you gotta leave it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the beautiful yeah. thing about it. So um, I'm looking forward to see you doing more videos on that. Uh, and definitely, I'm um, you know, I'm kind of like secretly looking forward to you roasting me in one of those videos, <laughs> just because I want to know which one of my terrible videos you're gonna choose. <laughs> And there's a lot of material over at our channel too. You can yeah. make fun of you can make fun of that for hours. See, there you go. You got some volunteers here. We're going for some punishment. Well, it was your it was your it was your uh, your idea, Hank. Remember that? Uh, yeah, I know. I wasn't going to tell anyone that. <laughs> well, because when you get yeah. in big trouble, listen, I got your back. If you get into anything, I got your back. But I wasn't going to I wasn't going to say that it was my idea. Like, dang, I, I don't I don't think I don't think it, uh, we're going to do anything to where we're going to get in any trouble. And if we do say something that could be, I guess someone could get mad at, I will contact the person if I can mm -hmm. before it goes up and, and show them the video. And if they say okay, then I'll. Yeah, I don't think they, you, if, mm -hmm. if they say no, then I'll you know I'll alter the video for them. Right. Yeah, I don't think you guys are, will be coming from like a point of view of hate. I think it's I think it's a it's a good thing to have for the community. We should make fun of ourselves a little bit. So, you, you know, know, I definitely I love, I, I love being parodied. It's hilarious. Right. Exactly. So <laughs> I I encourage people to check out. Derek, Derek's channel, it's 50% tactical. And we're also working on stuff like, you know, um, I'm, I'm supposed to be working on a documentary. So we were working on a trailer yeah. for Mike Deddy and, and, and Derek helped me edit that, you know, he's in school for that, for that stuff. And uh, I, I've got to get my act together and put it up there. It's just been real crazy for me. But, you know, oh, I got to get music a track on that for you, though. Yeah, Twice. yeah, we yeah, we've got to find music for it and put some music together because what we're going to do basically is put together a trailer for it and then put it out there and try to get some, you know, help to get that documentary done. It's on Mike Deddy and uh, Guns Across the Border or Operation uh, Wide Receiver, which is with the gun running stuff that went on. And Mike Deddy was involved yeah. in that. And it's a really interesting story that I think should be told. So definitely Derek's helping me out with that. So. Stay tuned for that. And you can also find you can also find me on the Instagram and Facebook. That's the only thing I do. I don't do any more <laughs> of the social media stuff because I can't keep up with it. Right. Cool. Yeah. So look at fifty percent tactical on everything. Right. Okay. Cool. So fifty percent tactical, nine hundred four outdoors, and thirteen C gun reviews. He's got internet troubles over there. So I want to thank everyone who is watching this and commenting. Uh, you know, I want to thank you guys for doing this. And of course, I want to thank um, Big Daddy Guns for sponsoring us, making this, making it possible for us to do this. We're going to try to broadcast every day and bring, you know, just our conversation to you. Sometimes it'll be some fun, exciting stuff. 
and you know sometimes it will just be some cool conversations if you're interested in getting in on this uh you want to you want to be here on the show my email is hankstrange at gmail you know dot com and i want to thank um all the people who support us on patreon i don't know if you guys have a patreon channel no uh, i think we just started one because of the whole youtube monetization being like cutting a quarter an eighth of what we were getting before i mean we weren't making any money before the youtube crap happened yeah we were, we were so far in the red <laughs> but i mean it's even worse now we're lucky if we get like 10 bucks a month yeah oh, you're, you're being me <laughs> yeah so listen so you so you've got one right so yours is patreon slash 50 percent tactical or what no is it's a uh, uh, forward slash fitty underscore oe okay so uh fitty underscore oe right yep, okay it. and do you have one do you have one steven i do not okay so if you yeah, get one if you get one let us know completely self-funded <laughs> yeah completely he's completely self-funded it, it hurts so. it hurts bad. yeah yeah you need to get a patreon so our <laughs> yeah. patreon is patreon slash hank strange people you know i've noticed especially since i've been doing these live videos some more people have been jumping on there i want to thank everyone who does support us on there and people out there who are thinking about it you know we need it i want to keep being able to do this so it's cool that big daddy guns gave us the space and the internet and the electricity for the lights and everything and they're helping out in other ways but we can use all the help we can get to just like keep doing this and build on it okay so and the last thing i want to say happy father's day to everyone out there everyone on my panel happy father's day to you and your fathers and everyone who's listening, you know, happy Father's Day to the fathers out there and the fathers of the fathers and the fathers, the fathers, fathers and the fathers and the fathers and the fathers. Could I try something real quick? Sure, go ahead. I want to, I want to see if this uh, screen share works. And I want, if it does, I'm going to show you a, a new intro I came up with. Okay, cool. See if Absolutely. you like it. Yeah, hit us with it. Let's see if it works. All right, yep, share. Let's see. All right, can you see it? Uh, mm. yeah, a little box. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, let me see. No. No. Oh yeah. No. I okay. Yes, I see your. Yeah, I see your um your editing window. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Now I see me. All right. Okay, so this is a new video. Yeah. It's the issue video that I was going to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's coming in, but it's just coming across like a little, like, you know, because of the uh, broadband, it's coming across a little slow. Yeah. yeah. Is, is it lagging on it? Yeah. But at least now we know that you use Final Cut Pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's well, funny is I get I get crap about that at school because everyone's like, oh, it's it's Adobe Premiere or or nothing, and it's like, really? Come on! I know plenty of pros that yeah. use Final Cut, and what's funny is everything in Final Cut is, or everything in Adobe Premiere is in Final Cut. You just have to know where to look. What's up, bud? Yeah, I think I I um I yeah, kind of agree true. with your friends at school. I think uh, Adobe. Adobe Premiere is way better than Final Cut Pro. <laughs> what about Windows yeah. Movie Maker? For, 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 for you it is, but for me it's not because uh, to really Adobe uh, Premiere, you need to use uh, shortcuts, uh, keyboard shortcuts, and with only yeah. one hand, it's hard for me to do keyboard shortcuts sometimes. And yeah, I've, been, I've been using Final Cut for so long that I know where everything is, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's it's not it's not something that's true for everyone. I think the re the difference is is that um, Apple does not develop Final Cut Pro really anymore. Adobe actually yeah. develops it for them, and they don't put in they they just like the the upgrades really are horrible. So yeah. if you if you're looking for something more advanced and that you can grow with, then hit the you know it's a learning curve. It's definitely tough. It's well, I got I got Adobe, I got all the Adobe products. I got the uh, Creative Cloud. And I go between Final Cut to Premiere to After Effects, depending on what I need to do. But for the most part, my timeline editing is on Final Cut, whereas, of course, special effects or anything else would be on uh, yeah. 
Adobe After Effects. Right, you got to end your screen share because I think your screen share is still coming back up with that window. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, all right. So at this point, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna end the show. Thanks to everyone for watching. Happy Father's Day out there. Enjoy it. Be safe. We will see you tomorrow. No matter what I'm doing, I'm gonna try to keep doing this thing. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Everyone, you guys uh, sit still there. We're gonna end the broadcast. Peace out. Happy Father's